Hello investigators and welcome to Until the End of Time. My name is Veronica and in this video I will be looking at Carson Sinclair, the butler, the long-awaited Carson video. This video is part of a series that I'm doing about the Scarlet Keys. I already did a video on Amina and I just did a video on the new customizable keyword. Make sure to check that out. Up next will be Kaimani Jones, the security consultant, but for this video we are talking about Carson Sinclair, the butler. A quick note on leaks that you have already seen if you watched my previous two videos. I am no longer going to be hosting or discussing leaks on my channel. The reason for this change uh, from previously is because with the new release model, FFG seems to be really trying to push content creators and preview season as a whole, and I think it is a shame for that to be ruined by leaks. So if you know anything about uh, any leaks, like for example, Carson deck building, I'm pretty sure that's been leaked. That's great. Please keep it to yourself. I don't want to know it. And please do not post it in the comments on this video because I don't want to ruin it for anybody else. Thank you. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about the man we're here to see. Carson Sinclair, the butler, is the guardian for the Scarlet Keys expansion. And he's kind of an unusual one. He's got two willpower, two intellect, two combat, and two agility, six health, and six sanity. I think these are the least impressive stats in the entire game, maybe discounting Preston. I mean, Calvin has zero, 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 but he gets additional stats from damage and horror, so doesn't really count. So hopefully he's got quite the powerful ability to make up for that, right? Well, his assistant traded and his abilities are you may take an additional action during your turn, which can only be used on the below action ability. And action, choose another investigator at your location. They immediately take an action as if it were their turn. Limit once per round for each investigator. And then finally, he has an Elder Sign effect. Plus zero, draw one card. You may resolve this effect any time another investigator at your location resolves their Elder Sign effect. So that's very unique. We have an Elder Sign effect that can trigger off of other investigators. And will probably be at around a lot of investigators when they are taking skill tests because we can give additional actions to other investigators at our location. Carson is a little bit like our old friend Leo De Luca, but for the entire team. He's not going to be doing as much, but the rest of the team is going to be doing much, much more. Now, before we talk about how to properly use this, let's talk about his signatures because they were in the preview article. We have, as you wish, a skill card with three wild icons, practice and expert traded, Carson Sinclair deck only, Commit only to a skill test being performed by another investigator. If this test succeeds, the performing investigator draws one card. If this test fails, you draw one card. I like the design of this. I really hope there's more than one copy in the deck or that the expansion is some way to get practiced cards back to your hand. Because this is quite powerful, but it being only a single copy would make it quite restricted. That being said, Carson likes skill cards. He likes being near investigators when they're performing skill tests. And so the ability to get three wild icons on a test is quite powerful. That's gonna make you pass most tests. And then we have his weakness, selfless to a fault, which I love as a weakness. Uh, you're just too self selfless. Revelation, put selfless to a fault into play in your threat area. Forced at the end of your turn, not at the end of the round, very important. If you did not commit at least one card to a skill test performed by another investigator this turn, take one horror and shuffle selfless to a fault into your deck. Now this is a very important nuance. Both of the timing points mentioned in the force effect are your turn, not the round, which means that you have to use Carson's ability on somebody else, have them perform a skill check and commit something during that skill check. Simply committing something to somebody during somebody else's turn isn't enough to negate selfless to a fault. This seems quite punishing as far as weaknesses go, because it's quite likely that it's going to trigger. The horror isn't too bad, though he only has six sanity, but more problematically, it's gonna shuffle back. And if you're running a lot of skill cards to try to negate this, you're probably going to be drawing quite aggressively, which means this is gonna keep popping up. That being said, it is also a weakness that if you're doing what you want to be doing, it does nothing which is the kind of weakness that I like. It reminds me a lot of the of Ursula's weakness, called the Unknown, I believe it's called, where 
as long as you keep moving to different locations and investigating, the weakness doesn't do anything. Here, similar thing. As long as other people are taking tests, you're fine. It's worth noting that both of these cards only really function in multiplayer. Carson's signature skill can only be committed by a skill test being performed by another investigator, and selfless to a fault requires you to commit to other investigators. It does not work on himself, which makes Carson kind of the only investigator in the game that is multiplayer only. I don't... <sighs> I know there's going to be people who are going to play Carson through solo and they're going to probably win the campaign with him and it's going to be funny and it's going to be a meme but for outside of the memes I think Carson is probably best evaluated in a multiplayer context because that's really what he's designed to do. And so let's have a look at how we use Carson to do the things that we would normally do in a game of Arkham. First up getting clues. Well we don't know his deck building, but it seems safe to assume that he could take a card like Scene of the Crime, which lets him get clues, testlessly, thereby avoiding the need to use his two intellect. Another option might be Magno or, uh, Flashlight, which, if you're using it on a two shroud or lower location, you're going to pass that test regardless of your skill value most of the time. But far more importantly for Carson is if you have somebody else at your location who has a very high intellect, say Daisy, who is also carrying around a magnifying glass and maybe has Jeremiah watching her back, you can give your action to them to then get a investigate with an incredibly high skill value, right? If you use Carson's ability on Daisy in this example, then Carson is essentially investigating at a difficulty seven. Sure, it's Daisy doing the investigation, but the end of the end of the day, the result is that you investigated with a seven and you got that clue. So yeah, this seems fantastic. And this seems to be the kind of mindset that I want to get into with Carson, where the question becomes, how can I use my teammates thoughts instead of my own to do the things that I want to accomplish? Now, when we're talking about enemies, it gets a little bit more complicated. Importantly, Carson's ability does provoke attacks of opportunity. It is not a parlay and it doesn't say it doesn't provoke. So. If Carson is engaged with some kind of enemy, you're probably going to want to wait with using it. Because of that reason, I do expect that Carson will be trying to use some of the weapons in the Guardian Card Pool just to make sure he can deal with enemies uh, so that he can then give away the rest of his actions. Hilariously, I think Mano and Mano is actually quite good for him. This level 2 card from the Nathaniel Chill pack uh, lets you do 2 damage if it's played as your first action. That seems like a fine way to get rid of an enemy that you drew in Mythos. Uh, keep in mind, Guardian also has cards like Beat Cop, cards like Dynamite Blast, neither of which requires skill tests to deal damage to enemies. Dynamite Blast can potentially hit other things as well, investigators notably, but there are ways around that. And if you have access to Guardian, you might have a lot of health soak as well. Finally, cards like Flamethrower have quite a high built-in combat boost, and Daring is a skill card from the Guardian faction that gives three wild icons on an attack or evade which is enough to get Carson to a reasonable number most of the time, just in case of emergency. So I do think that Carson won't be a primary fighter. He won't be the one who you know goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the boss, but he does get enough tools in his toolkit to negate maybe an enemy that he drew in, in Mythos phase so that he can then give away his other actions to the other investigators. Hopefully one of them will be able to fight the boss. And very importantly, thinking about the consequences of having Carson in your team when it comes to movement and mobility. Carson's ability only works at his location and he most likely will be running lots of skill cards which he needs to commit to people at his location. So safeguard seems essential and maybe try to avoid seekers who run all over the map, Ursula, Monterey Jack, because they're going to be very difficult to be at the same location as Carson so that they can benefit from his additional action. Stick to someone like Daisy or, you know, any of the other ones. <laughs> but basically, try to stick together and, and beware uh, when you're building your team. If Carson's in, on your team, you're going to want to prioritize slightly different things than normal, right? Prioritize those high base skill values because that way you can get the most out of that bonus action every time. Make sure you can stick together. Make sure you don't have to worry if things spawn far off because you're not going to be as spread out as normal. I think Carson 
requires you to think ahead about how he's going to help the team and how the team is going to help him for you to get the most benefit out of Carson. But I do think that he's quite powerful if you do. The fact that he can basically ignore most skill tests and let people who have very high skill values take them actually seems quite powerful and maybe makes him even better on hard or even expert. I mean, he's, he's never going to pass a test on expert, but that doesn't matter if everybody around him is just, you know, getting it done. Now, Carson is, of course, a very much support investigator. He makes everybody else around him shine. And there are multiple aspects to being a support. Not all of them are required for every support character, but I wanted to shine a light on some of them just to kind of give an idea of how you could build your deck and what different cards you could be using to make a Carson deck. And the first category is skill tests. Now, I already talked about skill cards a bit, but you know, put perception in your deck, maybe put unexpected courage in your deck, put cards in your deck that can help other people pass the tests, especially if they also draw you cards, because that way you can just churn through your deck, find other stuff. It's just a good idea. One strategy that I'm really looking forward to trying is Blessing of Isis with Carson. Carson's Elder Sign triggers whenever anybody at his location draws their Elder Sign. And Blessing of Isis, whenever you reveal, whenever, sorry, anyone at your location reveals two blessed tokens during a single skill test, they can treat it as an Elder Sign instead and return the blessed tokens to the bag. This way, Carson can make sure that the team gets lots of Elder Signs and he gets to draw cards off of that, assuming he can keep the bag stocked with uh, blessed tokens, which is a great way to spend some of those leftover actions when you're not wanting to take any skill tests yourself. Finally, uh, Map the Area is a card revealed by playing board games just the other day. Make sure to check them out. I'll put a link in the top right corner and, of course, in the description below, as always. Uh, this is a zero XP, one cost Seeker event. I don't know if Carson can take this card. Just going to put that out there. I haven't seen his deck building, but it does seem like the kind of support card that fits this category. So I just kind of wanted to mention it anyway. Anyway, it has a willpower and agility icon. It's an insight and tactic traded, and it reads Investigate. Add your, int, uh, add your willpower or agility to your skill value for this investigation. If you succeed, instead of discovering clues at this location, attach map the area to it. Limit one per location. Important. Reduce the difficulty of all skill tests at attached location by one. Now, if you want to speculate on exactly the best way to use map the area, please go to the playing board games uh, video and talk in the comments or maybe go to the Discord channel and talk there. I just wanted to call it out because it seems like a fun card. It is very much a support card, right? It makes everybody else's tests easier. Unfortunately, Carson is doing this test at a four by default, but there are ways for him to boost his stats and hopefully it's not that hard to pass a single test. And then making all the tests easier for your entire team seems like it's worth a little bit of difficulty. Moving on, we have Healing and Soak. Now these are kind of two sides of the same coin. And when I'm talking about soak here, I'm specifically talking about the ability to soak for other people, right? You are a support and you are trying to make the game easier for other people. And while healing has often gotten a bad rap as being something that you only really want to do when you're already behind and the tempo lost there just set you further behind, it's worth pointing out that at least in recent times, they've been printing better healing cards and the ability to kind of negate the penalty of a lot of treacheries just by ignoring the damage and horror by healing it or having enough soak to just soak it makes you able to play much more aggressively, right? I can imagine situations where you're fine taking an attack of opportunity or two that you normally wouldn't be able to take just because the additional tempo is worth that trade-off and you have enough soak to make it worth your while. So cards like Soothing Melody or Brother Xavier seem very powerful if all you're doing is just standing there, protecting your team, giving them your actions, which is kind of what Carson wants to be doing. Brother Xavier also importantly gets plus one willpower, which we'll get back to. And then finally, both Soothing Melody and First Aid can also heal allies. And as we see with the field agent that was previewed by Drawn to the Flame, there are ways to turn damage and horror on your allies into clues or damage. So just because you don't have a lot of damage and horror going on doesn't mean that horror, uh, that healing has to go wasted. There are ways to turn that into advantage. And if you're Carson and you're running lots of healing cards, using a field agent to get the clues that you can't get with your two, then three intellect, seems like a reasonable way to do things. Next up, we have Treachery Protection. Now, this is an aspect of Guardian that I really hope we see explored more. And if it's explored in this box, I'd be very happy with that. 
Uh, cards like Let Me Handle This first kind of reveal this, where you're able to take an encounter card meant for another investigator and get uh, you draw it instead, getting plus two to all of your skills. First Watch has a similar sort of approach where you're able to sort out which investigator gets which cards, and as the Guardian playing it, you can take more than one of them. Now, Carson has pretty bad stats, so you're going to have to either soak a lot, heal a lot, or buff your stats in other ways so that you can take these treacheries that would incapacitate other investigators. This style of support seems very useful if you have a rogue with a low willpower in the party, however, because getting to protect them from all the nasty willpower treacheries, while you use a card like Holy Rosary Level 2, which not only gives you a willpower boost, but also gives you bless tokens whenever you succeed at a willpower test on a treachery, is a great trade-off. And if you're losing maybe a couple of actions or taking some horror, but that means that the rest of the team can keep pressing on, that's actually a great trade-off, right? As Carson, your stats don't matter as much. You're less relevant. And I don't mean that in like a, oh, you suck, so therefore you can just get all the junk thrown on you. No, you can give your actions to somebody else. So if you have a treachery that, say, reduces your skill value, well, you don't care. You weren't taking any tests anyway. Just make sure that the other people can keep taking their tests. Uh, economy is a bit of an odd one in Guardian. Uh, they usually don't get great economy cards for themselves, but they get great economy cards for everybody else. Uh, cards like Stand Together, which let you and another investigator draw two cards and gain two resources. Leadership, which gives resources if committed to another player. And Rite of Sanctification, once again, ties back into our Bless strategy, where you can reduce the cost of assets played at your location, or sorry, of cards played at your location, not just assets, by releasing Bless tokens. This just seems like a great plan. Um, if you don't have a solid economy in your group, then getting a couple of these cards in your Carson deck will really help, right? You're spending actions to make sure everybody has the money they need to play all their awesome cards. And then you using your actions can give your actions to them where they can then benefit from the cards they're playing. So yeah, that's kind of all the different support things. There's also sometimes additional actions, but that's really more in the sense of like shortcut and Carson's ability himself. So I kind of decided not to go deeper into that. So that's kind of how I view a lot of the different support elements. Keep these things in mind when you're looking at your group, right? Is this a group that needs more economy? Well, no, because we have two rogues in the group already. So they're going to have money sorted, but that means they probably have low willpower. I want to be able to take the treachery cards for them, right? If you're playing Carson, tune your deck and your support options to whatever the rest of the team is doing so that you can best support them in the areas that they are weakest. This is how I think you should be looking at support investigators in general, but Carson in specific, right? You should be helping them do the things that they are bad at normally because they should already be able to excel the things that they're normally good at. Moving on to the other Guardian cards in the article, we have two cards with customizable the Hunter's Armor and the Runic Axe. I will not be covering them in this video because I already covered them in the last video. So check that video out. There's a link in the top right corner and in the, uh, probably in the description, yeah. Uh, they are super fun, but I already went into them super deep in that last video. So just check that video out. And I don't know, if you missed that video, you're probably not subscribed. So subscribe, I guess. I don't know, I don't usually do like the subscribe call to action, but hey, if you're here and you've watched this far, maybe consider subscribing. We do have a couple of other new Guardian cards. First up, Grievous Wounds. Wound uh, is a one cost zero XP Guardian event with two combat icons. It's a tactic and it's fast. Play after you successfully attack a non-elite enemy using a melee asset. You attach Grievous Wound to the attached enemy and then forced at the end of the round, deal one damage to the attached enemy. This is gonna hurt. So I think this card is potentially quite powerful, but has a bit of a drawback. So the problem is that in a common Guardian play pattern, this card isn't very good. And the reason for that is that the damage get dealt at the end of the round, which assuming that you're doing this in your investigator phase, means that you have to go through the enemy phase in order to then deal one damage to the enemy at the end of the round. Which is a lot of work to turn this into a vicious blow, right? If you have to take a hit from the enemy, I don't love that, right? Getting, getting hit, Hit by enemies is not great, and uh, all that for a single damage. Yeah, If you're Daniela, maybe that's slightly different. You're okay taking that hit, but even then, it's like one cost event for a vicious blow. Eh. However, 
if you are able to stick them and then disengage or evade from them and then get the grievous wounded or get the grievous wound attached and then get rid of them that's great because now suddenly this just start taking over damage and so in guardian you have warning shot which lets all non-elite enemies from your location to connecting location get pushed uh, you know, get pushed from your location to connect locations i'm sorry um but i'm more so thinking uh some rogue cards cards like uh cat burglar or just if you're skits and you have a high evade value you just stab them once with a melee weapon and skits has lots of options for melee weapons switch blade enchanted blade machete plenty of options then you evade the enemy and then you move on and you only need to have done like a single damage with that initial melee attack and then the grievous wounds will take care of the rest as long as you can stay away from that enemy it'll die eventually right you're in no rush and kind of spending one cost uh, on a fast event where the fact that this is fast is actually kind of nice um yeah that seems that seems kind of great right i'm thinking there's a lot of like four health enemies that tend to show up around like scenario six seven of a campaign seven eight even and just being able to go stab throw this on you evade or move away with cat burglar and then just you know let the enemy bleed out yeah i can think of worse strategies than that next up we have helping hand we have a zero xp skill in uh, guardian that has no icons it is innate you may commit helping hand to any type of test max one committed per test while helping hand is committed to a skill test double the skill icons of each other card committed to that test okay i don't really like this card but i don't hate it either i found a place where i would try to play it so my problem with this card is the following when we are evaluating this card it doesn't draw any cards it doesn't give any other kind of bonuses other than pure icons the only thing this does is pure stats so comparing it to an unexpected courage if there are two icons already committed to the test then this becomes another two icons this becomes an unexpected courage but if that's the case why not just play unexpected courage which you can also commit if you're not already committing two icons to a test and in a more extreme case we have a bunch of skill icon cards that can give three icons to a test which are actually generally considered quite good so helping hand would be another three icons which is great or it could even be four icons or five icons but if you're already committing five icons to a test do you need helping hand right that's my problem if i've got a promise of power which adds four icons to a test I don't need another four icons i'm already probably passing that test i don't want additional help so the problem with this card is that in situations where it is adding a lot of icons it's probably on a test that is already passing and on a test where i don't have the icons to commit this card is useless so i'd much rather run unexpected courage most of the time and i'm not that excited to run unexpected courage in my decks however i found a little bit of a combo that i'm okay running this in and it's worth pointing out that because this is an eight, Silas can take it because the cards that I really want to run with this are the Dream Eaters skill cards that are one XP survivor cards that work on the basic tests. So Sharp Vision, Brute Force and Expeditious Retreat. Don't sleep on that last one, by the way. It's really good. The agility one, it's like low-key very powerful. But the important thing here is that they start out with a single icon. But if they're committed to a basic action, it gains an additional two icons. So with Sharp Vision... It becomes a triple intellect card but it also gains an ability when the test is successful by two or more so you get these additional icons but you also kind of increase the difficulty in a way where you want to be succeeding by two now and especially for sharp vision a lot of the investigators who can take sharp vision don't have that high of an intellect and so struggle to get that succeed by two effect but helping hand would just be a three icon card in this case and i think that's the kind of situation where i would be okay playing helping hand right if i do know that i'm going to be committing an extra three icons on this test where i do actually need those extra three icons on top of the three i already got and with sharp vision brute force and expedition retreat i know those situations will come up right sharp vision on a relatively high shroud location with this little one two combo just these two cards committed i don't need anything more and i'm getting plus six on my intellect which is probably bringing me from a two because let's face it i'm a survivor 2-8 makes it pretty likely that I'm going to succeed by 2 and getting those 2 clues. 
So I like it in that situation, but I'm kind of skeptical of just running Helping Hand if I don't have a lot of other things going on, because I just think that it's going to be, it's just not going to be that impressive. If you are playing Helping Hand, in your mind, keep track of the number of times when you commit it, where if you hadn't committed it, you would just still have passed the test. Or all the tests where you would have loved to, pa to commit an Unexpected Courage, but you couldn't because it's a Helping Hand instead. I think this card has a place, but it's a very niche place. The fact that it doesn't draw any cards is kind of disappointing to me. I feel like it should have just read, draw a card. Or it is that successful draw a card. I hope there's maybe an upgraded version that does draw a couple of cards. Maybe it's a leadership style card where if you commit it to somebody else, they also get to draw a card. But as it sits right now, I think it's very narrow. Well, there we go. That's all the cards from the, all the Guardian cards from the announcement article. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to join the Discord. Uh, the excitement just keeps building and keeps building. There's so much more going on for this preview season and there's a lot more uh, coming. Comments are always welcome and hopefully soon, I'm planning on doing it this week, but I have kind of a busy week, is the Kaimani Jones video. Uh, Kaimani Jones was revealed on the back of the box, which was previewed by overall previewed. <laughs> Esmedi uploaded images of the box and Kaimani, Kaimani was on the back of it. Um, and that video will probably also contain just a bunch of random spoiler, uh, or sorry, preview um, card roundup, because I suspect that there will be a bunch more previews by the time we I get to that video. And there's not a lot of road cards previewed yet. So that's kind of going to be a general, let's get caught up uh, video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be seeing you until the end of time.